And welcome back to You Rejoin at 120. I'm Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as a student of computer science at the University of Regina. And today we're going to be talking about uh, the process of doing math. And so normally when you uh, are given homework or given an exam, especially on exams, unfortunately, uh, you're, you know, you're given a question and you may have access to a, a worksheet uh, of, of things that you, uh, equations perhaps, that you can use to derive a result or a uh, answer to the question. And then usually you get to the answer to the question and as discussed in previous videos, maybe you then do the question in a different way using a different approach. Maybe you derive the answer two different ways so that you can be sure that you did it right. You can double check your work. You can plug in your answer to the original kind of way of looking in the, the, the question in general to, to see if you can double check it. You can do all these things and then you get the result and then what do you do? Well, most of the time, uh, and in most math classes, you get the result, you add the two numbers together, you multiply the two equations together, whatever it is you do, and then you get the result, you double check it, and then you go to the next question. And this is a tragedy. Th this is a tragedy on a global scope because the process of learning doesn't stop when you learn something new. Uh, or most of the time, you learn something, uh, your brain certainly doesn't stop there. Uh, it, it just is a tragedy that the way that our education system works uh, has gotten to this, I guess, end point and then just stops and teaches people to stop and teaches people to not necessarily take any more steps after they've gotten that point. Uh, as discussed in Polly's How to Solve It, it's really, really important that if you want to be good at math and good at solving problems, that when you get a new result, uh, and the more new and the more kind of further from the beaten trail you go, the more important this is, that you look back and see what you can use the result for. See if you can generate any questions from the result. See if you can uh, are able to solve any other problems that you've had uh, with the result that you've now come up with. And especially with any uh, in interesting questions or problems that you can formulate or come up with, uh, being able to solve your own problem that you yourself came up with uh, using uh, results from other questions uh, uh, is an important part of learning mathematics, and it's something that isn't really taught. Uh, I certainly don't remember any point in my uh, you know 12 years of elementary and high school uh, that the the teacher encouraged us us to come up with our own mathematical problems for ourselves to solve. That was completely missing. And so you, if you're anything like me, you probably are also missing this really crucial step, which is come up with your own problems and then see if you can solve them. Uh, and see if you can solve them again. If you can't solve them, kind of note them down. It's, a, it's something that you don't know with certainty that there even is an answer to, perhaps. Uh, so as discussed in the last video, um, you know, you want to keep in mind things that you know and things that you don't know. You want to have a list of kind of both. You want to keep kind of ready available uh, things that you want to work on and things you want to be more uh, confident or, or certain about uh, so that when you solve some problem or some facet of a problem, maybe the implicate there are implications of or from that to the things that you don't know. And that is where you can sometimes find connections uh, which are very fruitful to find. Uh, and this is related to practically everything we've discussed. Uh, it's related to the grades video because everything that you learn can shed, or it, it's possible that you can shed light on previous and unrelated topics with it. So you can, if you look back on the classes you've taken, see if what you just discovered has any impacts on any of them, any of the topics you've covered, any of the things that you've learned. Uh, is there any relationship between what you just learned and any of that? Uh, it's related to the procrastination video because uh, sometimes you can kind of look at a result and come up with a result and you can ask yourself, was the ignorance of the knowledge that you just learned blocking you from doing something? Uh, I, was there something that you would have done uh, but you just didn't because you didn't know that thing? Uh, if you can look back and find that, then you have no excuses. Go and do whatever it is you were blocked from doing before. As mentioned, it's related to Descartes' method, uh, in that uh, he, again, will, will have this kind of list of things that he knows, and when you add to that list, 
uh, the kind of surface area of things that you could know in the future increases, sometimes dramatically. And so when you've discovered something, see what else you can prove or what else you know now that, you've known, now that you know that something. It's related to the different approaches video because your new result may allow you to have new ways of approaching old problems. And you can double check your old work uh, in, from different directions occasionally once you have new ways to approach it. Uh, it's related to the, to the third uh, video in that uh, it's a good way of kind of getting a, a, a mental picture of how exponential growth works in that pretty much everything you know, uh, if it's, it can impact everything else you know, that's only a quadratic relationship of, rela of relationships. So uh, exponential growth is actually faster than that. So if you can imagine growth faster than the relationship between everything you know and everything else you know, that should be uh, exponential. So uh, it's related to the Great White Combine video in that uh, you should share your results early and often so that not only can you use the result, but everyone th th that you know, everyone that you care about, everyone in the world can also use your results. So share early and often, and in particular, share early and often with people who may not have access to resources that you use to get your results. So people who may be excluded for various bullshit reasons, make sure that they have kind of extra attention from you uh, so that they can get results uh, from you quicker than they might otherwise have. It's related to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 video because once you have a pattern and once you see a new kind of pattern, sometimes you can't even help but see it el elsewhere and possibly everywhere. So does your pattern or does your result allow you to see data or see other data in a new way? Can you reframe the way you look at things given the, your new result in kind of a new light? Can you see any new patterns with it? Uh, it's related to Occam's razor because once you learn something new, what if your view of what is and is not the simplest explanation of things may change. So see if you can find any examples of, of, of situations where you are unclear of what to choose between two alternatives uh, and does your new result impact which of two alternatives is, is simpler. It's related to the you are a cockroach video because it may even be worth trying, even in math. See if you can use your result to, uh, or, or can you use your result uh, to view other people with more empathy? Uh, if you can stretch that muscle, uh, it's really worth doing so. Uh, obviously not everything, in especially abstract math, is going to be directly applicable to other human beings and your relationships with them, but again, it's, it's worth thinking about. Not even a second, just a kind of a moment's glance at wh whether you can do that. Uh, it's related to the, the converse accident, uh, because you can ask, is your result an exception to a general rule? Should the rule change? It's related to the all the data video. Uh, because all of the other results you've gotten so far, you had taken into account all of the data you had, ideally. Uh, so the question is now, you have more data. Does all of those results still hold? Uh, now you have more data to take into account for those results, uh, etc. Um, it's related to the anal er, analogy video because you, you could, you know, can you make an analogy that involves what you just learned and does that imply anything about anything else you're curious about? You know, see if you can build on what you just learned. Uh, it's related to the moving the goalpost video because once you have a new result, what you can do is you can uh, move your opponent's goalpost in a place more disadvantageous to you. You can move the goalpost so that your opponent is in a more favorable position for them, and see if your result implies that you know you are still correct. Uh, so be generous in terms of, you know, giving your opponent the, the benefit of the doubt and see if the result that you just learned allows you to do that. It's related to the FNORD video because once you've learned something, you can sometimes go back and look at the list of things that confused you in the past and see if you can deduce them. Even in terms of words, there are some words, especially when you get into Latin and uh, German and uh, the uh, kind of medical terms, uh, a lot of the time there are root terms, and so if you can learn uh, generally what the root term is associated with, sometimes you can kind of derive what the term itself means without even being told. Uh, I encountered someone uh, who was telling me about uh, a doctor who kind of list listed off this 20-syllable term or about you know his, his wife or whatever, uh, and he just thought about it for a moment and then broke it down into the parts of you know e e what each root word meant 
and derived exactly what the doctor had said from that, which basically resulted uh, in something like that the doctor didn't actually know what was wrong, he didn't know how to cure it, and it was just causing problems in some certain cavity of the body. Uh, even just being able to do that, just derive meanings from words based on convention, that can be useful. Um, so, you know, can you derive things uh, that you know from what you just learned? So, if you, you know, you, you find an answer to a question, a math problem, you know, can you start from that and derive things that you already know so that you can kind of view your new result as a different approach to solve something you've already know as a way of confirming it? Uh, can you derive the opposite of things that you know from your results? So is there some inconsistency in the things that you know that you can undo by this new result? A lot of the way that math is taught to this day, the teachers do not stress the interconnectedness of mathematics. And if you can automatically teach yourself to connect the things that you learn with other areas of math, other things that you know, even things outside of math, you can start to kind of teach your mind to associate uh, the parts of mathematics with each other so that when you encounter something that you don't know, you're kind of well primed to treat it in the right way, in the right connected way with things that you do know, that the answer might make itself available to you. Hopefully that's a useful thing to know. Can you think of any place in your life where this might have been useful? Think about it. Think about not just yourself, but the people around you. Could they have known? this? Could they have lived anything different? These are the sort of sorts of things you can ask. So, as usual, if you have any questions or would like to suggest ways that this could have been helpful, um, feel free to ask anywhere where this video is posted. And as usual, there should be a Bitcoin donation address at the bottom here, available, uh, so that you can support videos like this and our whiteboard marker supply. And I will see you next video.